وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ أُورِثُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ لَفِي شَكٍّ مِنْهُمْ مُرِيبٍ One of the scariest ayat in the Qur'an in regards to this, and if you reflect on a reality around you, and that we reflect on Muslim reality around us, you'll appreciate how like the Qur'an is a mirror to reality. It just reflects reality. Allah says, no doubt about it. Those who were given the book in inheritance much after them. Now before I go further, what is this talking about? They were knowledgeable people who did what in the ayah? They disagreed. Now Allah is talking about people who inherited the book. Now the book itself is revelation, yes? So the book itself doesn't have confusion. The book itself is absolute knowledge. But because they inherited the book in a climate where there was fighting going on, argumentation going on, debates going on all the time, refutations going on all the time, they inherited the book in that climate. Allah says, no doubt about it, those who inherited, those who were given the book in inheritance much after them, لَفِي شَكِّمْ مِنْهُ They are no doubt about it, they're in, a, they're in doubt about it. They're in doubt about the book itself. They're like, if this book is supposed to unite humanity, if that's what it's supposed to do, if prophets came, revelations came, so Allah could make the world one, to unite the world, how come the most knowledgeable in this book are the most divisive? How can that be? I don't understand. The more people study this book, it seems like the more they fight. I don't get it. I was raised in that. I was raised in that environment where people were always arguing, you know, using the Qur'an, using the, using the back in the day. They're just debating with each other, that's all they're doing. And these are supposed to be people that know the book the most. So the people that should call to unity the most should be the people that are the most knowledgeable in the book. There's too much of a, dis, like a, a, a friction between these two things, too much of a contradiction. There must be something wrong with this book. What else could it be? And people don't even bother studying it in the next generation. They're like, I don't want to be like that guy. Why, why would I study? So I can be like him? I don't even need it. Forget this. I don't want nothing to do with this. They get into doubt about it themselves. And then they take a step back, and then they become intellectuals, not of a religious kind, but of an a-religious, anti-religious kind. So you have a huge population of Muslims in the world today that will never ever ever come to the masjid and will convince you why not. They will say, these people, these mullahs, all they do is fight with each other, and they're all territorial, and all, what, all they do is you know, hate on each other, and they judge you, and they put you down, and they think they're so, so far above everybody else, that they're the really righteous close to God. I don't need to deal with that kind of like personality disorder. I want nothing to do with this stuff. This is, this is why I say religion is man-made. That's what they'll tell you. These people, the people that represent their religion are the biggest proof that religion is man-made. That's their argument. In other words, the people of knowledge have successfully been able to turn off the vast majority of Muslims for even, from even becoming curious about Islam. The vast majority of Muslims. I mean, there, mashallah, there's a good number of Muslims sitting in the audience here. What is that? And even, mashallah, even a huge number prayed Maghrib here. It was one of the healthier masajid in the country. How many more Muslims in Richardson that never seen the masjid? That don't come? I wouldn't want to come. Because they have certain assumptions made. Maybe it's not our fault that they made those assumptions. But they saw something as they were being raised in a Muslim country. Or they saw something as they were being raised in a Muslim household. They saw certain things that just turned them off from the deen altogether. The, we can debate each other. And Allah is saying, here's the price you will pay in the Akhirah. Had I not given you a verdict on the Akhirah, your matter would have been judged. In other words, hellfire is already alluded to. Inna labiba bin al-isharati yafham. But what is the price we pay in this world for being this way? The price we pay, Allah says, is our next generation. The cost of arguing this way, the cost of div divisiveness this way, is the next generation is not even sure about Islam. They're not even sure. I tell you, I've seen this more than I've ever seen it. I, I couldn't imagine. As I was being raised, I used to hear in khutbahs all the time, when somebody comes to Islam, they never leave. You can put coals on their chest. You can burn them alive. You can rip them to shreds. They will not leave, la ilaha illallah. When somebody comes to Islam, they never, ever, ever leave. That's what I was raised listening to. And I was convinced of it. Until I started traveling America. And I started meeting young kids. 15, 16 years old, 17 years old. I don't want to pray. I don't think there's a God. I don't think there's anybody listening to my prayers. I'm not so sure about Islam anymore. I don't think that's God book. All over the country, one after another, one after another. And they don't come to me. 
They're afraid to come to me. Their moms, their dads pushed them to me. They literally pushed them and sat down with him. And I, I apologize to them for sorry, bro. I just, you know, your mom put you on the spot. But let's talk a little. And he started talking and said, yeah, you know, I'm not so sure. This and that. And you wonder where that began. One of the main causes of that is the people of knowledge, their primary concern is supposed to be spreading that knowledge. Making it easy for the people to learn their basics. Making it easy for the people to have a foundation. What did the energies get exhausted into? Pushing our own agenda. Expanding our own base. You know, calling people to us, not going to them. Da'wah is you go to them. You, you, know, you invite them and you go to them. You engage with people. You don't expect them to come to you. We became so, you know, self-indulged self as groups. Our madrasa, our institute, our masjid should be the most well attended. Our program should be the most, our YouTube video should be mo the most viewed. Us, 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 us. Go to people, don't ask them to come to you. We had to go out. When we became so self-indulged, and the only thing we wanted, you know, as an individual, you want to propel yourself, that's arrogance. But even as an institution, all you want to do is propel your institution. That's communal arrogance. That's all that is. A house of Allah is the house of Allah. So what? It's, it's registered as a different non-profit organization as the next masjid. It's still the house of Allah. There's no competition. You know? So we took that individual competition and then made it institutional competition. That's what we did. Instead of it, it's supposed to be individual cooperation that evolves into institutional cooperation.